All right, let's freaking do this. Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and uh, a lot of folks have been talking about the new uh, Digimon card game to come out of Japan, and I figured I would uh, chime in. Um, Digimon is a lot different from Pokemon when it comes to card games, because while Pokemon has had um, the same card game for its entire lifespan, Digimon has, before now, in America, had at least four different iterations of uh, card games here. This is the uh, the Digifusion one, you have the uh, the one for Frontier, you have the one for Adventure Zero Two and Regular Adventure, although the ones for these two are basically the same. I'm not sure why they uh, changed so much about it since the rules work exactly the same. This one is a completely different beast though, and then you have uh, this monstrosity over here, and that's not even... Uh, those are just the ones that came out in America. There have been others in Japan, like uh, this is uh, this is uh, another frontier one. It's called Maramon, but uh, this is uh, basically what uh, spawned this game. Although this game plays a lot differently. This one lasted in Japan for a while, but this was in the background. They had a number of other Digimon things going on. There was uh, an Atmon card game. There were cards for Battle Spirits. There were a lot, but now they uh, to tie in with the uh, remake of Adventure, which I, I have mixed opinions on. You can uh, check my. Twitter thread for that. They have put out a uh, new iteration of the card game. Currently, it's only Starter Decks, although I think some booster packs, uh, the booster boxes recently came out. These Starter Decks have been out for about a month, but this was the soonest I was um, able to get my hands on them because of the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Um, we have three Starter Decks, red, yellow, and blue, starring uh, Taichi, Takeru, and Yamato, or I still remember them as Tai and TK. I actually can't remember what they called the uh, Yamato in the English dub. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm losing it. Anyway, um, it is a very, very different sort of game from all, from, it's definitely different compared to all of these. It's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of, uh, streamlining going on here, although it's, uh, it is a lot like Duel Masters, so let's take a look here. Yeah, one thing you might have noticed is that the boxes, uh, like, this is a standard size playing card. These boxes are not very large, um, and you'd think for something that I think is sold somewhere uh, in the range of like 20 bucks maybe? I don't know if there's a, I don't see a, a uh, suggested retail price on here, but uh, this, uh, this sort of packaging, it, <laughs> I don't think it would fly in America. It looks less like something you'd get a starter deck in and more like something that would contain like, I don't know, a, a deck of Grand Canyon themed playing cards or something. These are very tiny boxes. Excellent in conserving space, which might be good for game stores in Japan where space is a super duper premium. But in America, I feel that a package like this would fail to really portray the value, not to mention a lot of stores wouldn't want to carry something that could be so easily pocketed and walked away with. Um, but uh, as for the boxes here, we of course have the big Star Attractions, War Greymon, um, Metal Garurumon, and Angemon. These are characters who had, uh, I think Angemon is on the front. This is not the strongest card in the deck by a long shot, but I think it's on here because Angemon is a lot more iconic than it's, uh, than it's a uh, Final Evolution Seraphimon because Angemon was the, you know, the sort of 11th hour character who appeared to defeat Devimon in the first arc, which is why he's here. They've even got him doing the Hand of Fate move here, so, uh, Look on the side, uh, it's a little ripped there, uh, that's some, some damage from shipping. They actually have the, the card list on the side, I don't know how well you can read that with how well this darn camera stays in focus, but it's a it's a very short list. Um, it is either a full playset or a half playset of everything in the deck, so if you wanted a full playset of everything, you would have to buy two, and they have the starter deck label, so that might be the only way to get all of these cards. Um, Apparently, the rule on how many copies of a card you can have in the deck is determined by set number rather than by name. So, you could make a deck of nothing but Angemons. I mean, you'd lose, but um, it means that these starter deck cards, yeah, you'd have to buy two copies of the starter deck. At least you only have to buy two. Um, you'd have a lot of pack chaff, but uh, not sure what to do after that. Just have some, some instructions on the side and on the back. We have... What would be great if it were upscaled a little bit. We have a, a quick uh, sample of the cards. We have some light instructions here. Uh, the sample of the cards, including this little icon here, which I will 
get into later along with uh, mostly a lot of big information here this is something that with like a lot of Japanese games is they have they, they dedicate a ton of space to like this contact information I don't know if they have to do that or not but it's space that in an American release could be used to uh, do some more exciting things and I figure if this does come to America it would come in a larger starter deck box more akin to the ones we are used to seeing so anyway let's uh Let's take a look at these things. They are pretty tightly packed, so it's uh, a little uh, bit of a trick to get it open. But there we go. Hey, I didn't even damage the box. I do like boxes that you don't have to destroy to open. I can understand. I I've done a little research. I think I understand now why some uh, American companies make the boxes uh, where you have to destroy them to open them. And that's because people might open them up, take out only the cards they want, and then try to return them to the store. That's a problem. Um... Although, the, the the fact that these decks all have uh, some sort of temper evidence seal on them, that should, frankly, be enough. You just need to, I don't know, make it make it, uh, make it it like, a, a, like a, a dark tape or something. Like Best Buy, I know, they have like the tape that's like dark in color. So anyway, here is our deck. We have uh, the rule cards here. Man, I don't think I've seen this in a while, where the rather than getting a rule book, we instead get rule cards. Um, I've done some research on how the card game actually plays, and it does something kind of weird with its resource system. What it does is it has a power bar that both players share, and what happens is, in order to uh, pay for a card, let me see if I can find a token real quick. Yeah, in order to uh, pay a card, what you do is you have to sort of move down this power meter in order to uh, play it. I think they call it, they call it memory? in this game, but it's essentially like a power meter, and you are allowed to go into negatives on this, so if, for example, I'm at two energy, and I want to play a card that costs five, I would go one, two, three, four, five, and I would go into negative three, but the moment you hit negatives, your turn is over, and it becomes your opponent's turn, and your opponent's energy bar starts where you left it, so my opponent would be starting at three, and you can go into negatives as far as negative 10, although you can't go past that, so if I try to, uh, like, say, play War Greymon, who has a cost listed here of 12, and I'm on 0, I wouldn't be allowed to do that, so that's the idea, is the player who goes first starts on 0, but if the uh, player who's going doesn't go all the way to 0, it moves to positive 3 for the next player, so you can't, like, store or bank uh, power from the energy gauge for later, although, hmm... I'm not sure about how this system would work, because the player who's losing is obviously going to need more memory to consume, and the player who's winning can just use little memory, or even be devious and send themselves and send their opponent exactly to positive one at the end of their turn. I think it's a mechanic designed to, uh, you know, get rid of resource cards. I'm not sure how well it works. It's a bit clunky. I've heard rumors that I think the Fire Emblem game used a system like this, but, uh... You know, and they actually have, like, little punch-out tokens that you could use, and you only need one, but, you know, a dice, a coin, anything like that will also work just fine, as long as it's not too large. I was gonna grab, like, a Pokemon coin earlier, but that's, like, <clears throat> way too big to try. So, yeah, the rules are similar to Duel Masters in a number of ways. The, uh, you, uh, cannot attack with a monster, you put it into play. You start the game by dealing the top five cards of your deck. These become security cards, although they have a bit of, uh... A, diff a couple of different mechanics to them that make them different. You also get an egg deck, and uh, these are the look, these are the first cards on the deck. Now, this is a little like side deck that's set aside, and uh, at the start of your turn, after you draw, you can flip the top card of the uh, of the deck. A lot of the, the instructions say to flip it in a new pile. I think it's better if you flip it back on top of the stack because you're only allowed to have one of these uh, baby Digimon active at a time. So. That would, you know, having a card on top is like, oh, you have to get this card out of the way before you can get the next one. That's just what makes sense to me. Now, um, what this thing can do is, um, normally you have to, uh, you know what, maybe I should just, uh, get back to the beginning. But yeah, you have, uh, of course you have the, the baby deck over here, but also you have, uh, the cards in your normal deck. We have, uh, four copies of, uh, Plotmon slash Salomon. We have four copies of, uh... Bakumon slash Tapermon. Four copies of Padamon, which is Padamon in both languages. Only two copies of Angemon, 
who is, uh, again, Angemon in both languages. Four copies of Tailmon, which is uh, Gatomon in English. Uh, four copies of Unimon, which I think is Unimon in English as well. Uh, Pegasusmon, I think is something. Oh, Pegasusmon is the uh, the armor form of Patamon, so that's Unimon. Um, four copies of Gold Border. I don't know if I can get that to, to light up with the, the lights I'm using, but yeah, four copies of Gold Border uh, Magna Angemon. Although these are starter deck cards, so even though they have Gold Borders, all of these cards are technically commons. A card that comes in a starter deck is automatically a common, especially if you get a play set. Uh, four copies of Anjay Woman, uh, which does not get a gold border for whatever reason. Two copies of uh, Magna Dramon, although it's called Holy Dramon in um, uh, in Japanese. They uh, they just like to take. I mean, you're allowed to have the word angel, but I guess you're not allowed to have the word holy, um, which is kind of strange. But yeah, he's called uh, it's it's a uh, it's Holy Angemon in Japanese as well. You can have angels, but you just can't have the word holy. Um, for the longest time, I thought it was weird that Magna Dramon came from Anja Woman, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me, but then, you know, you remember the primary form is Gatomon, so it changes, you know, it's, it, this is like a temporary step, and then it turns back into a, a giant cat again, so it makes a lot more sense when you think about it that way. Um, and of course, two copies foil of Seraphimon. Um, this is uh, the, the final evolution of Angemon, but it's not quite as iconic as the, uh, as the, as Angemon himself, because Angemon has this big appearance out of nowhere. Um, but we also have hero cards. We get four copies of, uh, TK, who, uh, has the effect that, uh, what is it? My, my security Digimon get, uh, all get, uh, plus 2,000 power. So that's, that's on my opponent's turn. They all get plus 2,000 power, if I am reading that correctly. Security Digimon are one of the uh, unique mechanics that this game uses. And then we have the uh, option cards, which are all named after various Digimon attacks. So this is Heaven's Gate um, for Magna Angemon. Its effect is... Uh, oh, it's just a... I think all of the decks have this. It's a basic plus 3,000 power bump. We have um, only two copies of uh, Heaven's Charm, which is Angie Woman's signature attack, which uh, lowers an opponent's Digimon power by minus 2,000. Um, the yellow deck seems to be about a combination of lowering an opponent's attack value and restoring life points. Uh, red is, of course, you know, your typical aggro. It's about dealing damage. It's about um, raw destruction. And blue, blue is uh, an interesting type in this game. It's about removing evolution, um, evolution pieces from the opposing Digimon and then being rewarded for doing so. So blue seems like it has a lot of potential to be very, very strong because it basically undermines what you are able to do in the game. Um, I'll have to explain this in a bit. Then we have uh, two copies of Holy, F uh, Holy Flame. I have to play it on my turn, but I can give an opposing Pokemon, uh, opposing, uh, did I almost say Pokemon there? Oops, an opposing Digimon minus three security attack, which I will also go over. And then, um, uh, what is it? Uh, seven Heavens, which is, uh, gives one opposing Digimon minus 10,000. Now, like I said, how this deck works is, uh, I mean, it, it's about giving the, uh, hitting the opponent with penalties. And we have some, uh, some interesting things here. So let's see, Patamon's a good example. Or do I have something better than Patamon for an example? Oh, I can fit three cards on here. Do I have something that has both an effect and an inherited effect? No. Um, so I guess I'll just go with these three for now. We have uh, we have uh, Tokemon, Patamon, and Angel Woman, all uh, the same language either way. And uh, these are all yellow cards. We also have red and blue. I think there's also, uh, I imagine there's also another type. There's probably like a purple type for like the, the evil Digimon, which aren't featured in the deck. Now, uh, baby Digimon, you can see they have no other points up here. What they do is they uh, inhabit the top of the deck and they are used to uh, be the basis of a Digimon that Digivolves. Now you'll see these Digimon, they have two costs to them. They have a play cost and an evolution cost. Now, if you uh, 
based on the the level here. Like I have Tokemon who's a level through uh, level two and Patamon who's level three. So on a special step, I can move Tokemon into my battlefield and evolve Patamon on top of it. This is uh, an evolution, and I can do that for free. Or I could just play Patamon on its own, which I believe I want to. Oh no, it's a. Uh... Actually, no. This one has a. Uh, this one. Oh, that's a. Uh, that's actually different. Um, the. Man, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't even know where to start. Uh, but yeah, you can digivolve a uh, Digimon. It, it can be the same. It, the only requirement for digivolving is that the Digimon has to be one level higher, but the same color. So I know that sounds like color mixing is made impossible, but it's actually not because you can always pay the regular cost to play, put a Digimon into play. So if you wanted to splash in some Digimon of other colors, as long as you don't make them part of the evolution chain, then that is certainly doable. Although it can be of any color, like I said before, it's uh, this game is basically owning up to the fact that uh, the Digivolution system is just a bunch of convoluted spaghetti. So if you want to be really confusing, you can Digivolve Angemon into Angel Woman, <laughs> And uh, yeah, that is indeed possible. Um, although let's uh, let's uh, get back to what I was talking about before. So yes, the, the, the Digimon, they all have a cost, a level. Um, they have, of course, their combat power, except for the, the baby Digimon, which can't fight, they only exist to allow evolution. And you cannot attack with a turn you play a Digimon, but you can attack with a Digimon the turn you evolve it. So if there's any incentive to, a big incentive to use a baby Pokemon, a baby D D Digimon, Digimon is to allow you to attack with a Digimon the turn you play it. Although there's an odd restriction on the, uh, the Digi Egg cards, where uh, a Digimon that you uh, evolve from it does not get any sort of on-play effect if there is one. There is another Patamon that has an on-play effect. Um, speaking of effects, let's talk about probably the single most confusing aspect of this entire game, which is going to drive people off the wall, I am sure. So, there are two types of Digimon abilities. There are a card's base abilities and a card's um, inherited abilities. Now, a base ability, if it's a clear box, on top of the card art, that is that Digimon's ability. If it is below the name in a colored box, this is not the Digimon's ability. This Digimon cannot use this ability. However, the Digimon that digivolves from it can use that ability. Basically, it uh, it gains the abilities of any of these uh, colored in boxes on the stack here. So Angemon doesn't have this effect right here, which is, uh, which is, let's see. Okay, if you have four or more um, security cards, you uh, can add one memory at the start of the turn. Uh, Angemon does not get that effect, however, he does get the effects down here that I believe are both related to uh, if an opponent's Digimon has zero power. Uh, in this case, it gives, uh, this, this, uh, this form can give it plus 1000 attack power until the end of turn if the opponent has a uh, power zero card, and this one allows you to increase the memory by one when your uh, opponent has a, uh, d uh, a power zero card card. So Angemon does get these two effects, but not this one. Um, and if I went to Angemon, Angemon would get all of these effects along with uh, her effect, which is in a clear box over the text. So this is her ability, which is if you have three or less security cards, you can uh, you take a card from your deck and add it to security. Now, what are security cards? Uh, so at the start of the game, you of course have five cards dealt out like in front of you or, or, or the, the game mat they use is to the side although this thing doesn't come with the game mat although if they ever do an English release it will definitely come with like a nice paper mat which would be appreciated um anyway they work like the uh dual masters shields let me get out a let me get out a, a card from the red deck here um which does mention something called 
security attack. It's the aggro deck, so these uh, have cards that can do more damage. Let's use War Greymon here. So what happens is if a Digimon attacks and uh, and it hits you, there's there's nothing to attack. You can it's like Dual Masters. You can either attack the opponent directly or you can attack um, tapped monsters, and you have to tap to attack. Although in this case they call it rest mode and active mode, like a lot of Japanese games do if they if the attack gets through then they destroy one of your security cards now what happens is when they do that you reveal the card and several things can happen in this case because i revealed seraphimon what happens is they it, this actually has a revenge mechanic so if a digimon let's say if it were not war greymon but instead Birdramon, who busted the card open. Basically, this card attacks this card, and whoever has the higher power wins. So, Bergermon would still break the security card, this would still go away, it would actually go to the discard pile, but Bergermon would be destroyed as a revenge mechanic. Not sure how well that will work, considering how strong a lot of the attacking cards can be, compared to uh, a lot of the defenses, but... Um, Moving on, some cards actually get the ability security attack, like plus one, plus two. Um, War Greymon here can get as high as security attack three, which means they break additional cards whenever they uh, whenever they perform a security attack, although it's still done one at a time. For instance, War Greymon gets plus one security attack for each of its uh, components. For each, for each of its uh, additional evolution material. So if, for example, War Greymon had its had a full suite of evolution material going from Koromon all the way to War Greymon, then its security attack would actually be three. In which case, it breaks all three of its uh, breaks three security cards. Although you do them one at a time, and this is actually uh, an option card that has a security effect. Now the security effect is on this turn. Um, uh, all of my opponent's Digimon gain m security attack minus one. So, uh, what happens is this card, uh, when destroyed as a security gate, hits all of my opponent's Digimon with security attack minus one. So, War Greymon's damage would drop from three down to two. So, that would, uh, this would get discarded. It's not like Duel Masters where the card just automatically goes to your hand. Um... And then I would move on to the next one, which uh, is another option card with an, abet, an, uh, an effect. And this one says, move the card to your hand. So that one is just, you know, straight up classic Duel Masters. And then we have, uh, if we were to keep going, we would have also popped this one, which allows me to immediately play it for free. So it's a bit like We Cross, where the uh, a lot of the cards with security effects have a... Uh, unique effect depending on how they are destroyed and of course we can also have another monster and like duel masters all of the security cards have to be destroyed and then you have to be attacked again in order to officially lose the game um but yeah let's let's see let's uh, actually take a look at some of these card effects but i still think the big confusing one is going to be remembering that the effects in the colored boxes are not ones that uh, are not usable by the top. The, the, the ones on the actual Digimon can't be used by that Digimon. They have to be uh, evolved, digivolved from below in order to do that. Although, again, you can always pay the cost to put them into play at any time. So you can splash cards in like each deck comes with only one card with the blocker ability, which means that if uh, War Greymon were to attack my security cards, I could instead have this guy intercept and take the attack instead, you know, classic blocker stuff. Every deck comes with uh, a blocker card, although they also have the effect that if you attack with them, you actually have you actually lose two memory to do it. So I haven't really had the chance to test out the game. It is interesting that they have sort of opened the floodgates by... Uh, enabling anything to digivolve into anything as long as it's a matching color, but I think that will um, support a lot of interesting strategy, and like I said, it's kind of a tacit admittance that this uh, whole game involves a lot of card spaghetti. It has a lot of interesting potential. Like I said, I see blue going places because it can it can 
boot all of these cards out from underneath the, the Digimon and then get a power up when against empty Digimon. So if, if, if it can get some momentum, if it manages to like destroy all of the opponent's cards to the point where they're just desperately playing one-off cards in order to try to stay competitive, then I see Blue having a lot of potential, although Blue tends to be strong in a, a lot of games that it's introduced in. So yeah, that's a, uh, a brief look at the Digimon card game. If you want me to do more of a deck breakdown on each of these starter decks, I'll be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments below. Until next time, this is Kodak signing off.